Okay, All right. So uh, this says that uh, what is the advantage of uh, this kind of a theorem? See this uh, advantage of interpreting Riemann integral as limit is that now if you want to look at uh, the algebra of integrable functions, f is integrable, g is integrable, then you want to look at whether f plus g is integrable or not, right? If you want to go by upper and lower sums, then you have to relate the upper sums of f plus g with the upper sum of f and with that of g. That becomes a bit difficult, one can do that. But now it is being the limit, if I take f plus g, so what will be integral of f plus g? That will be limit of integrals, uh, limit s p f plus g, right? But the limit split, limit of f plus g is equal to limit of f plus limit of g. So that is the advantage that sometimes this uh, way of proving uh, that is integrable is useful uh, to get the result. So uh, one proves the theorem like this. If f and g are integrable, then f plus g is integrable and uh, integral of f plus g is integral f plus integral g. So this is via the limit operations because the left hand side will be a limit of norm p going to 0, right? and that splits into limit of SPF with respect to F, SPF with, because, because what is the Riemann sum? F plus G at some point Ti into the length. So that splits into two parts. So limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits. So using that, one proves all these results uh, as a consequence of that limiting operation. That if F and G are integrable, then alpha times F is also integrable and alpha comes out because in the limit, limit of alpha times something is alpha times the limit. And similarly, f and g, right? So if you look at SPF with respect to f, will be less than or equal to the Riemann sum with respect to g because f is less than g, right? The value at a point of Ti of f will be less than. So using that uh, criteria of integrability, one proves these things. And this is also uh, not uh, difficult at all, saying that if f is integrable in A to B, then it is also integrable between A and C in between, C is a point in between, plus the integral between C to B, because a partition of the whole interval can be put it as a partition of A to C and C to B introducing the point C in between. Okay? And this uh, um, is because for an f uh, which is uh, integrable, integral may be negative. Okay? So absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value. Okay? So again, when you look at the limits, right? SPF, you look at the uh, look at the uh, absolute value of the Riemann sums. So that will be less than or equal to mod f at into the length. So this becomes obvious in that case. So using that, that is the very useful result uh, in proving integrability. And not only that, it frees uh, uh, the notion of integrability from function being bounded. Okay? Historically, it is of great importance because that gave a lot of uh, interest in uh, looking at what is called Fourier series problem or uh, in probability and statistics, you will find what is a characteristic function uh, of a distribution coming and looking at uh, their Fourier series problems. Okay. So this is uh, integration. So what we have done is we have given a function f on an interval a, b to r. We defined the notion of geometrically the notion of area below the graph of the function. Right? And that we interpreted as via lower sums, upper sums or via the Riemann sums. There are some situations where you can 
extend this notion of integral see f on a b to r f is bounded the domain of the function is a bounded interval you can extend this notion when either the domain is not a bounded interval or the function is not bounded on the bounded interval so one can define the notion of integral okay so that is called uh, the one extension of riemann integral and that is called the improper integration okay so uh, one looks at the function defined either on a interval which is not bounded right but the function is bounded or the function is defined on the interval ab which is bounded but the function is not bounded itself on that interval right so these two situations can be handled in some cases so let us look at some example for example look at the function defined on the bounded interval 0 to 1 okay open at 0 close at 1 f of 1 over square root x okay so at every point bigger than 0 this function is defined okay and what is the integral integral of 1 over square root x from any point c if you take a point c bigger than 0 so that is equal to 1 over x raised to power minus 1 by 2 so that uh, is the integral okay now in this the interesting thing happens if i let c go to 0 c is bigger than 0 if i let come c closer to 0 this integral has a limit when c goes to 0 this goes to 2 right so what we are saying is even though the function is becoming larger and larger as you come closer to 0 right still i can think of saying what is the area of this 1 over square root x on in the interval 0 to 1 area below the graph of the function now it is becoming very large near zero okay so this is the situation where we can define so this limit will be called as the integral of 1 over square root x in the interval 0 to 1 so here this is a situation where the function is becoming bigger and bigger in a bounded interval let us look at another example look at this function f of x is minus 1 to the power n divided by n and the function is defined on a infinite interval 0 to infinity x is positive okay if x lies between n minus 1 to n then the function is defined this way okay so uh, we would like to know can we say something like the function has some integral from um, 0 to infinity so unbounded interval so what we do we have already defined the notion of function integral when the function is bounded over a bounded domain so let us look at the integral of this from 0 to some point okay then it becomes a bounded interval okay so let us choose a point say im which is 0 to m and look at the integral of this function in this interval so it is a continuous function a uh, piece wise continuous function in that interval so what will be the integral this is defined as constant function in this interval so what will be the integral the value of the function into the length of the interval summation okay now this as m m is the interval i am 0 to m now let us let m go to infinity okay then what happens to this series minus 1 to the power n divided by n have you come across series in your courses so this is a convergent series okay this is a alternating series actually so this is a convergent series we'll do it again also later on and its sum is equal to minus ln of 2 ln is a log function so now the function is defined over the whole uh, interval 0 to infinity which is unbounded but in every bounded part it is integral is defined And, and as as we stretch that interval right to infinity the limit exists so in, the, in the earlier case it was c 0 to 1 and c was being pulled to 0 right so in all these cases uh, there the function was unbounded here the function is bounded 
but the integral the domain is unbounded interval so such things are called improper integrals so let us make a definition let us say i is interval a to infinity right and f is a, a bounded function on that the interval is 1 to infinity but the function is bounded so if i take part of a to something it will be a bounded function on a bounded interval and suppose that integral exists and as we take the limit of that point going to infinity that also exists then we can say f is integrable on the interval a to infinity so let us uh, define that so take a sequence bn of numbers which is increasing to infinity and in is a to bn okay and suppose f is integrable r is the symbol riemann integrable on the interval in that is a to bn okay if that exists take the limit of this and suppose that limit is equal to some number is convergent to alpha and that number alpha is independent of the way you go to infinity right it should not depend upon that then you say that the function has a integral and that integral is called improper integral of f over the interval i these are called uh, here the domain of the function is unbounded so these are called improper integrals of type 1 where the domain is unbounded but the function is bounded the other one which we saw earlier where the domain is bounded right but the function became unbounded and still the integral existed so that was this situation a to b right and from c to b the function is integrable and limit c going to a exists then we say this is improper integrable function of type 2 so domain is bounded function is unbounded in the other one function is bounded but the domain is unbounded okay these kind of situations arise uh, uh, for functions uh, which are both important in mathematics probability and statistics okay the improper integrals so we'll I'll give some more examples of this one way of checking uh, is called comparative comparison test which says if uh, how to check whether some integral will exist or not okay so if f is less than or equal to g and if so saying that the integral a to b is finite right that is saying that the improper integral exists then so if integral of uh, the do dominated function improper integral exists then the of the uh, the function which is being dominated that also exists and if this is infinity okay if this is infinity then g being bigger that will be also that means when the improper integral exists you say it is less than infinity when it does not exist you say it is equal to infinity or one uses the word convergent and divergent improper integral is convergent that meaning that integral limit exists divergent okay so another way of saying here because we are zero so that is another way of writing okay for example look at uh, 0 to infinity e raised power minus x square here the function e raised power minus x square right the interval 0 to infinity that is unbounded right so let us try to analyze this in two parts we'll see e raised power minus x square behaves differently between 0 and uh, infinity so let us look at if x is bigger than 1 in this right then what is the inequality e raised power x square is bigger than e raised power x and so e raised power minus x square because the function is e raised power minus x square is less than e raised power minus x so this is less than right and look at the integral 1 to infinity of e raised power minus x what is that integral 1 to infinity that means look at the integral 1 to some finite quantity of e raised to power minus x and limit of that as that point goes to infinity so what will be that integral 
right. So, that goes to infinity that the other part will go to 0. So, this limit is equal to 1 over e. Is that okay? Integral of e raise power minus x from 1 to some point c, right. Exponential derivative is itself, integral is itself is a negative sign. So, negative, right. So, this integral exists. So, that means e raise power minus x square from 1 to infinity will also exist by comparison theorem because this integral is finite. Okay. So, by comparison test the integral e raise power minus x square will also exist. Okay. And 0 to 1 e raise power minus x square does that exist? The domain is bounded right 0 to 1 e raise power minus x square what is happening to the function? It is a continuous function right. So, integral exists we know that integral there is ordinary integral. So, the integral 0 to infinity will exist right and uh, this is something similar to what is called uh, normal distribution normal density function that will come in statistics. So, that is improper integrals. Okay. Right. So, that is one of the uses of improper integrals. Here is another application which we will not uh, go in much into. I want to look at the integral, uh, I, I think I pointed out earlier, look at the integral of 1 over 1 minus t square dt minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, let us try to split 1 minus t square factorize that is 1 minus t and 1 plus t right and uh, the 1 minus t into 1 plus t, t is between minus 1 to 1. So, what happens to 1 plus t? That is always 1 over 1 minus 1 plus t that square root. Okay. So, that will be, so this quantity is less than 1 over 1 minus t. So, if between 0 and 1 look at the integral, integral 0 to x f t because this is less than this quantity. So, it is less than or equal to this quantity 0 to x. So, I am trying to look at the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 minus, I am not going to 1 because if I try to go to 1 the function becomes unbounded 1 over 1 minus t 1 over 1 minus t square root as t goes to 1 it is becoming unbounded function right near 1. So, I should avoid 1. So, to look at 0 to x from 0 to 1 only that integral exists okay, and that always remains less than or equal to 2 because 2 minus something. Okay. So, that means what 0 to x f is non negative. So, this is a increasing function bounded above. So, limit of this 0 to x, x goes to 1 will exist. Are you following? Right? Because 0 to x non negative quantity, the interval is increasing is non negative function, integral will be non negative. So, these quantities are non negative increasing bounded by 2. So, limit of this will exist. So, this limit exists. Okay. Because this limit exists, right? so similarly with minus 1 to 1 also the limit exists. So, you can say that this integral exists. Now, the integral is unbounded, that the function is unbounded near the value 1. Okay. Now, because of this, here is one application of this. Look at the integral, this integral just now we said exists minus 1 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t square. Look at 1 over 1 minus t square that is the derivative of what? 1 over 1 minus x square square root, it is the derivative of sin inverse function. right? <clears throat> so, if I integrate the derivative, if I am able to integrate, I should get back the function. But here the integration is coming via improper integral, right. When you are away from minus 1 or 1, you are applying fundamental theorem of calculus and getting value of sin x 
and at the end points it is the limit. So, that is also giving you the continuity of the sin inverse function because the way it is defined. So, one uh, I will not, will not go into this just for uh, uh, the sake of exposure saying that the improper integral can be used. In fact, here we are saying that you define sin inverse as improper integral of its derivative. And once sin inverse is defined, this is defined from minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, what will be the value of sin inverse at the point minus 1? What do you think should be the value? That is right. Now, as such we have not defined pi by pi or anything. So, we are defining a sin inverse function between minus 1 to 1 taking values in R via integration, right. One proves it is continuous differentiable and all those properties. It is a continuous function, it is a 1 1 function, it is because what will be the derivative of this 1 over 1 minus t square positive, right. It will be a monotonically increasing function, derivative is nowhere 0. It will be a 1 to 1 on 2 function between minus 1 to 1 to r. What will be the range? If it is a continuous function on minus 1 to 1, a interval, range also should be a close bounded interval. And so, it should have a left end point, it should have a right end point. That left end point is called minus pi by 2, and the right end point will be plus pi by 2, because you can see from here it is what is a odd function. Okay. So, this is uh, the way of defining sin inverse getting what is minus pi by 2, what is pi by 2 and then you invert that function you get sin function between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 to minus 1 to 1. And if you look at the graph of that sin function because sin inverse is 1 1 on 2 right that also is a 1 1 on 2 function right between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and then you extend it periodically everywhere. So, that is a way of defining trigonometric functions and also in between you define what is pi. Okay. We defined pi also uh, via um, sequences, look at the area of the circle. right? So, that was the beginning of our story of saying that a monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above must converge. So, that the area of the inscribed and gons was monotonically increasing and bounded and similarly outside was decreasing. So, this is a, a way of uh, defining a way of uh, extending Riemann integral when either the domain is not bounded or the function is not bounded. There are some many other functions. Uh, which in applied mathematics also it comes as something, something called gamma functions if you have heard about those things they are all uh, uh, improper integrals. Okay. So, we will not go much into it because we just want to give you an exposure of something uh, called improper integrals as and when it comes to in one of some of the courses you will study more of them. So, this is one way of uh, extending uh, your integral.